The Early Show medical correspondent, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, is with us. And we've been talking to folks in the crowd. Everybody's got questions about this virus. Tell us your name, where you're from. My name is Tammy Osborne. I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania. There you go. And what's your question for Dr. Ash? Well, when I go back home, what do I do with my regular life? Do I stay indoors? You know, it's, everyone is asking that question. We can't live our lives in a plastic bubble, obviously. People are concerned, and appropriately so. You just want to go about your day-to-day -day life using the common sense precautions that you do all the time. But should I have a mask on? I mean, what... How do I know that I'm not walking into a school auditorium, say, and someone in there has it? You know, right. those masks actually are more for the protection of the people around a sick person than they are to prevent the germs to get ah. into us. So you don't need to go to the mask level unless you have direct contact with someone that you know is sick with influenza. Go home to Erie and be safe. All right, there you go. And we have the, what's your name? Uh, Steve Sulligan, Travelers Rest, South Carolina. There you go, and? I'm Donna. There you go, and what's your question? Yeah, we have a trip planned to Europe uh, next month. Could we anticipate as Americans having a problem transiting through different European countries on different modes of travel? Very, that's a that's very a good question. That's a great question, Steve. So, a couple of things. First of all, I don't think that people are canceling their trips now for this. We can, though, expect that well, there will be some delayed cases, so you might see the number of cases go up. Again, common sense precautions, and I think you're going to have a great time. Thank you. Wow, good luck. I hope, I, you know, we hope it doesn't change between now and then, right? Well, the cases will go up. Right. We expect them to go up, but it's not going to be so widespread that you won't be able to travel. There you go. All right, we have another question. What's your name? Hi, Julia Tenezio. And where are you from? Bethel, Connecticut. All right, what is the question? Question from Bethel, Connecticut. Is it safe to eat pork? It is absolutely safe to eat pork. The CDC has publicized that it is not transmitted by cooked meat. You want to use the same precautions you use in terms of handling raw meat as you did a week ago. Didn't I read early this morning that they even think that this this strain, this H1N1, actually doesn't have any relationship with pork whatsoever? Well, it, it was this particular strain was never found in pigs. It has a subset of genetic material that was found in pigs, but not this particular So that's one. part of the other reason where they're really trying to get everybody to call it H1N1 That's as opposed right. to, you there can eat you the white meat, yeah. the other white meat. <laughs> the other white meat. The other white meat, very good. What's your name and where are you from? Barbara Gaines, New York, Connecticut. All right, and your question? How is swine flu transmitted? So, respiratory droplets, don't get too close to the microphone if you've been coughing or sneezing. The, the greatest source of transmission is actually on our hands, so we touch something that has droplets on it and then we touch our face. And that's why you brought along this. This is your I handy dandy little. So I think that we, I have two children in grade school and these are great for, to, for moms to make at home. If you're worried and still sending your children to school, it still is cold season. Hand sanitizers, some tissues. If they cough or sneeze, they can use regular plain old soap and the, um, the antibacterial wipes. I think these are great to there send. There you go, because that's what President Obama was doing, that whole gotta wash your hands thing, right? You have to Here's wash. Here's my last question real quick. Top of the USA Today, as flu scares shut schools, are officials going too far? Where's the difference between panic and prudence? And pr listen, it's very important for the media and medical professionals and the CDC to distribute information. There is a fine line. We don't want to scare people, but knowing the facts usually can make people feel more at ease. All right, go to Europe. Go back to Erie, live happily South ever Carolina, after, have pork for dinner, and don't cough. All right, so we got it all. Dr. Jennifer Ashton, thank you very, very much.